the first um, memory I have of my father was uh, when I was about three. He worked as, um, he was a painter, and he, but he painted boxcars for the Northern Pacific. So when he came home each day, his clothes were covered with paint and his shoes, everything about him smelled like paint. And so those were my first memories of him. Um, I've always loved the smell of oil paint and turpentine. As a young person, I started as a painter uh, with Isabel Johnson and in a serious way when I was 17. And uh, I've never wanted to do anything since. I've spent my entire life, uh, adult life, uh, trying to make art. I started as a painter and um, uh, with her and, and spent a year in New York uh, when I was about 21, which was an accident. Uh, she was talking to a grad student and suggested he apply for a, a Beckman scholarship to the Brooklyn Museum. I thought she was talking to me, so I applied and I got one, so I went. And it was a, profound uh, influence because that was the, the heyday of the abstract expressionists and uh, Franz Klein and Motherwell, um, all of these people were, were experiencing the beginning of remarkable success. And as you can look at my paintings, you can see that influence uh, very strongly. After uh, being in New York and the Army, I went to graduate school in Detroit and did an MFA in sculpture. Um, and that came by accident as well. I was working as a, in a parts house, and it was my job to throw away the obsolete parts. So I saved the bumpers and took the bumpers home, and I made uh, welded steel bumper sculpture and other things to the point that I wasn't painting any longer and uh, got into grad school on the basis of a por portfolio, no prior sculpture experience at all. So I made stainless sculpture, very minimal, very formal, um, which I did for about 15 years. Uh, I taught at the University of Montana in Missoula for eight years and the sculpture that I did during that time period made sense in that scale. In the mountains, the, the landscape is finite, so things that operate on human scale are okay. When, we, when I quit and we moved to the ranch west of Molt, where you can see 200 miles in any direction, sculpture no longer made any sense because I couldn't afford to make it on the scale that it needed to have in order to exist comfortably in that environment. So I went back to painting. From that uh, time period to this day, I have been really uh, most heavily engaged in, in uh, painting. People ask me what I paint, and it's, uh, uh, I usually say, well, I paint animals in the landscape. And they say, well, why do you paint the animals? And I say, they are in the landscape that I, in which I exist. And uh, to me, the animals make the landscape significant. From 76 uh, until 96 or so, I ran cattle on two different ranches, uh, one west of Molt, one on the Mussel Shell at uh, Rygate. It gave me a chance to be in the landscape that I was painting, uh, learning about it, um, I didn't paint a cow for, I don't know how long we had cattle, several years before I even, uh, even attempted it. So I felt, I've always felt like I needed to know my subject matter in order to do it. And uh, so it worked out very well. All of the hours before 8 o'clock in the morning were mine. So I would get up often at 3.30 um, and paint until 8. And then in the winter when you're calving and you have to check the heifers at 2, I would stay up and paint. And uh, Bill Stockton calls uh, January and February the aesthetic months. And, and he had the same experience uh, over in Grass Range in that in the summers, there's just too much labor to do. But in the winter, uh, there are long periods of time where you can devote yourself to your work. A young woman came from the Corcoran Museum to pick the biennial show and she looked at my paintings uh, at that time and um, 
I was so naive I didn't know. And she said, I'd like to use these pieces in the, in the biennial. And I said, well, how long will they be gone? She said, a year and a half. And I said, oh, I don't know if I want to, uh, to let them go. These three paintings then were shown all over the country. And as a result of that, I was picked up by two galleries that really built my career. So they were really pivotal pieces. Winter's my favorite season. I think some of that came from, again, the business of being solitary and having more time during the winter months. Um, also, as a painter, to me, one of the most difficult, uh, nearly impossible activities is to paint in the summer. There's just too much green. Uh, winter kind of strips everything to its bare essentials, and you can see value in winter uh, in a way that you cannot see it in the summer at all. One of the things that, uh, that I've done is uh, I've done a series of, of pieces of sculpture. Some are trophies, uh, some are body bags, some are guns. And uh, these began uh, with picking up skulls, again, on the ranch, and picking up skulls which I began to be interested in. At the same time, we were dealing with the uh, business of hunting. Same thing with body bags. Uh, I went to uh, Reliable Tent and Awning just down the street to get something. I don't know what it was. And they were making game bags. And so I had to make a, a, a body bag for a white-tailed deer, which was essentially a canvas bag with a zipper in it and some deer antlers. And that expanded itself to a number of other pieces. Um, and then the gun, uh, the gun pieces followed up with this, again, uh, trying to look at what it is we think about these things. And I don't have any conclusions. I don't think we know in the dialogue, if you think about it, the dialogue relative to this is certainly a national debate now over, over the use of guns and what we do. Um, this then brought me to my own personal experience in part of the reason I quit ranching is I could not stand the death loss. When I lost a calf, I had to go through what I call agricultural triage in order to figure out what it is that I might have done to save this creature's life and again and again and again and again. And it finally, it finally made me want to quit. One of the things that I do is I, I, I think in terms of series. So it takes, um, sometimes it takes 20, 30, 50, 100 pieces related to each other in order for me to feel like I've discovered enough about that that I can go on to something else. When I make uh, one painting, it helps me then to begin to make the next one. And uh, I don't know, I don't know where they're going to go. I like the fact that I don't. Uh, I like the idea that uh, that there are new things to be discovered. I, d I don't plan. If I knew what the outcome would be, I would do it. I would go to the next one where you didn't know what the outcome would be. We spend part of our year in Sun Valley, uh, south of Sun Valley, and part of our year in Bozeman. So uh, we travel through the Monida Pass area. And the painting uh, right behind me is called Monida Angus. And I have looked at those cattle in that, in that valley uh, well, hundreds and hundreds of times. When I paint, um, I'm not trying to, uh, I'm not trying to tell you something about cows that you can't discover for yourself. So what I'm trying to do as a painter is to share with you, uh, if I can, how much I love the place in which I live and the animals that populate that place. Uh, additionally, if my work is um, very heavily uh, textured at times. Um, that's, I think, uh, a lot of, about paint. I want you to be aware of the fact that these are paintings. They're also illusions, but they are indeed paintings in the same sense that uh, this was a 
a breakthrough for the abstract expressionists in the early days. They went uh, totally away from illusion to making you absolutely aware of the fact that these were canvases. And I like that. Um, I like that in my work. I love paint. Uh, oil paint is the most seductive, wonderful, incredible material that's ever been invented. Uh, it's mystical and magical and uh, there's nothing like it, uh, absolutely nothing like it. And it, it, allows, um, it allows you to discover, it allows you to uh, do all kinds of things and uh, it is profoundly humbling. Uh, but it's a great tradition to be a part of. Uh, it's a, I don't know, thousand years old or fifteen hundred years old. and. Um, I feel like I'm just beginning uh, to learn. Montana has um, caused me to be who I am, and uh, I love this place.